All right. Our next speaker is Ryan Brown. Ryan is a filterless engineer at Brave and is well known under the name Fanboy. He lives in New Zealand and maintains EasyList, Easy Privacy, and the Fanboy lists. Over the last few years, he's been improving reliability and expanding the blocking of the filter list and trying to keep one step ahead of the ad servers and trackers trying to evade being targeted. So over to you, Ryan. Uh, how's it going, guys? Uh, thanks for the intro. Um, so the changes uh, we cover are covering more and more ads and we're trying to make easy list and easy privacy uh, more relevant for the users. So we're trying to prune dead and unused filters and the performance improvements that it can deliver by just removing, simply just removing dead filters. So this is an introduction of what we've changed and how it improves performance and a sort of side experiment included with this, uh, with this uh, talk. So going by a brief history, you can see the file sizes for EasyList were increasing steadily over you know over the years with uh, little to no audit of existing filters. Um, as you can see by the uh, blue line, we're increasing it. We're like we're adding more and more of these filters. Um, some were changed, but little was you know audited from previous filters so over time we have added a lot of filters but haven't actually removed a, you know removed many of them so we've i guess what we're saying is that there's a lot of dead filters there were a lot of dead filters and the size of the file really reflected this so with the list additions when we, cut, when we started covering these rules, fingerprinting scripts were often first party and ran, randomly generated. So we, added, we started adding these to the list. We expanded the CNAME tracking um, thanks to AdGuard. And obviously we hope that more extensions support CNAME uh, blocking to take advantage of this. Uh, we expanded uh, the event trackers in Easy Privacy. So we're blo uh, blocking trackers, monitoring every clicks, button changes, scrolls, uh, mouse moves, etc. cetera. Um, this can create some false pauses, but for the most part, it's actually pretty safe. Uh, then we get start looking at the uh, consent scripts where they'll tie third-party ad servers or trackers to a consent message, which is still a privacy issue, even if it is related to a consent message. And lastly, uh, and this is relatively recently as well, uh, we have looked at and implemented in-page video advertising in EasyList. So this is where a video will start randomly appearing, uh, playing an infomercial style video. And it will, and if you're too lucky, it will actually follow you uh, while you scroll uh, scroll through the web page. So these are the changes that we've, yeah, we open the scope more on, on easy list and easy privacy to cover a bit more to make it make the web basically more friendly uh, for a lot of users. What we've uh, basically what what tools we used to start auditing what we removed. Uh, we started with the pruning of the D domains. Um, I have to pronounce this pretty cor uh, correctly. Uh, pine pine Responsible. But anyway, um, the domains uh, will spit out basically any domains that have been expired or changed or basically just domains that were added a long time ago that no longer exist on the web and that tool has really helped us at least prune a lot of these dead domains. There's a few false positives, but it's pretty easy to start picking them up uh, on a semi-regular basis. We start limiting unused filter flags and just basically simplify these filter rules. Uh, and then audit the each cosmetic on a per website basis. So basically, you have to go through the website, browse the website, and based on maybe when the commit was originally done, we'll see if uh, we'll see if any of the filter rules are old enough that we can audit and remove. And basically, a new policy to you know maybe prune the rules as you start adding to them. So if you commit a new filter rule 
maybe review if, if there's any previous filters. And this is what we come up with. And this is a quite a decent graph since 2019. So this is going from a, pro, uh, a file size of 574K compressed to now around 334 kilobytes uh, compressed. So basically we're looking at about a 51% decrease in file size. And I can expect this probably to hover around maybe the plus and minus 20K in file size. So we're looking pretty good compared to you know, what, what we were previously. Uh, websites change, you know, so, uh, sites change, and we have to keep continually auditing these lists. Otherwise, we'll get back to where we were before. So we have to just keep an eye on it to make sure that, you know, if a site changes or a CMS change, we can quickly just either change or remove uh, these. So, and it also helps with helps with the mobile platform as well. So sites, say say a mobile device has less system resources, they can, it's a lot easier for them to load up EasyList without uh, too much overhead for them. And here's the performance uh, increases is for Adbot Plus. And we're looking at a, uh, we're looking at a around a 10% improvement in load times between uh, the old list, the 2019 list versus current day list. So, size so size will increase uh, just for using a newer list, basically. And then looking at uh, how maybe this is a side this is this is a side project we're looking at uh, is the load times between Easy List and Easy Privacy and Crumbs. So we're looking at, uh, if you include easy list, easy privacy and easy list as by default, we're looking at at least a 9% a improvement between the two. And still, there's still an improvement with crumbs as well. So we're looking at a quite a, a good improvement if we're looking at just uh, including easy privacy as a default list, which is what we probably am I'm aiming for is to uh, not, Look for uh, easy privacy as more of a not just a companion list, but actually part of uh, AdBlock Plus and Ad AdBlock or any other extensions. We we find that privacy should be important for a lot of users. And with AdGuard, we saw a, I saw a, a huge increase. Uh, I reran this benchmark a few times just to be sure, but this was a huge increase, about one hundred and twenty four percent increase, just including the privacy list as a default list saw a huge increase in performance uh, load times, just including a, a privacy list as a default. So yeah, I guess in conclusion, if, if, uh, if privacy is important, having easy lists and easy privacy as a, uh, as a or even a custom list, uh, I guess if, if, if First party is still important. You could create a custom third party list as a default list. It would still improve pr privacy by quite a bit. Uh, we're looking at even, even a 100 millisecond load time, just including third party blocking. And that would certainly uh, improve uh, web, uh, website load times, just, in, just including a, a subset of easy privacy, but ideally, you know, either either option's better, better than nothing. I think privacy should always come first for a lot of users. And yeah, including easy privacy as a default list. So uh, that was a quick and quick and dirty way of looking looking at the privacy aspect. But if yeah, I you know, I'm free to ask any questions. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Um, we Thank do you. have some some uh, space for for questions um one question from sophia is when it comes to improving performance and keeping track of and removing dead filters are there any additional tools that you would like to see that could simplify this work going forward um combining tools so i 
like for example, if you're looking at cosmetics, you have to not just browse one site, but browse throughout the site to find if uh, if the cosmetic is is elsewhere on a page. And often you have to look at the original commit. Um, it's 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 hard. You have to there, there is you can do some automation to a certain extent, but um, it's not the easiest, you know, you, you still have to go through it just to be sure that you haven't missed something or, um, but there might, there might be something that there's out there that could, that could do it. Eh? Yeah. I think there could be some scope for, for more automation here in terms of just, uh, but that's, that's something to be explored. I think, um, if we have mm. another question from Andre, um, how do you deal with breakage caused by easy privacy? Uh, it's, it depends on the scope. If it's just one site that breaks, then we could just allow that certain that certain rule to apply to that. But if it starts breaking elsewhere, then we could either adjust the rule or remove the rule completely. It depends. It depends on the the scope or the breakage. I mean, over time, Easy Privacy has slowly improved to avoid much more breakages there's still the odd breakage here and there um but it's not as bad as it used to be and it's certainly improved i guess i guess it depends on the breakage if, if it's a big role or not yeah as as it's always with with complicated questions it's it's always depends um i have another question with uh, from vikas it's is measuring or managing breakage in the roadmap for improvements to easy list or easy privacy. How how so? Is it um if we we do outline breakages with uh in, in our commit logs, um we could we could put it in um more more details in our commit log when something breaks and hopefully it's not added. If um, if it comes down to it, it's it depend it depends. Sometimes it might be a certain platform that's breaking, so we can't specify a certain platform that's breaking. It might be okay, say on Chrome, but on not on Firefox and vice versa. Um, we we can't specify at least, at least in a basic easy list rule um, to outline if a certain breakage is only occurring in a certain platform or not. Only. All right. Um, those are all the questions from the from the audience. Thanks once again, Ryan. Um, and we'll oh, we have one more from Andre. Um, and we do have a little bit of time, so let's go into this. Uh, how can we as ad blocking tool developers help you with maintaining easy list and easy privacy? In an ideal world, what tools would you like to have? Um, what tools? Uh... I mean, you can go into science fiction, right? It doesn't have to be something which is available right now, but something that you would like to see magically sort of making your life easier. I, gu I guess a quicker way of alerting, knowing that a certain role is broken or a certain role is causing issues. If, if for example, you added a, it looks like a, a, a added, added as um, a third party role that is causing issues. Uh, knowing that you caught it in time before it breaks, basically. So if you added a rule that maybe is, it looks like a tracker, but it's not a tracker, finding out quicker, quicker that, quicker, the sooner the better, basically, that you can remove it. But you don't know, you know, a lot of servers are in disguise and you just don't know. Eh? So you basically have to keep finding a way of knowing that a rule is certainly not used for something else. Um, and this, I guess CNAME blocking comes into this as well because CNAME blocking can cause issues for some people and, and not issues with others. So basically, you have to, you, I guess you have to find out what a way of knowing that something is blocked. Eh? All right. Um, and that gives us, that's basically um, we're all out of time. We have one more question from Kamal, but if it's okay, Kamal, we can take that to Slack. Um, and for now, um, I'll, I'll say thanks, uh, Ryan 
and I'll hand it over to, to Joe. 